Hi, this is Jerry with I Love RV Life. We have been looking at portable power stations for a number of months now. Most of these have been very, very large, very expensive units. 2,000 to 3,000 watt hours with you know AC inverter capabilities uh, that are at 2,000 watts. But many of you have been contacting us. That is a good application, but we need something smaller, less expensive, and we just don't need all that power. Well, I've got a solution for that. Hi, this is Jerry. I've been reading the comments on YouTube and getting the messages from you from our website at ilovervlife.com and you are sharing, hey, we need some portable power, but we just don't need one of those very, very large, you know, several thousand dollar units just for some supplemental power when we travel. I understand that. Not everybody needs to run, you know, microwaves and all those types of things. And uh, you just need some form of supplemental power. This could be for things like a portable refrigerator. I did uh, a demo on that not too long ago. You know, look, not everybody travels in a big fifth wheel. I understand that. Some are in tents or, you know, just doing the weekend thing or maybe a small pop-up camper or even a smaller camper than that. Or you're in a van and you're just wanting to be able to run, you know, some devices, keep your phones charged up, tablets, those types of things, run a fan. Uh, run the uh, small refrigerator for a while and then you, as you're going from destination to destination the ability to be able to charge those units back up either through solar or through the uh, some people call it car adapter I call them the cigarette lighter adapter those types of things so those little 12 volt round adapters and uh, I've been looking at different types of manufacturers out there and I was contacted by G Power and they said look we sell strictly through Amazon We've got a number of different size units. They had little bitty and they had some, you know, small and then they had a medium size unit. So I asked them to send me two to be able to look at. One is called the S500 and the other is called the U1000. Uh, let me show you each of these. I'm going to evaluate both of these at this point in time and I'll kind of give you the features and functions of each one. So let's start now with the smallest of the two unit the S500. This is the S500. The unit can be charged in a number of ways. Uh, if you have an AC output that you can use, just a standard 120 volt household type circuit, you can plug it in here. It comes with a cord for that. It takes, if this unit was completely discharged, it takes about an hour and a half to charge the unit up. It doesn't take long at all. Uh, you also have the ability to charge it using a solar panel. Now it does not come with one of these 2.1 millimeter adapters. That's what's required here. That would have to be purchased. And there's a number of different solar panels that come configured like that. Some have adapters uh, like a portable, a portable panel that you might use for something like this. Um, and you can only use a 100 watt panel. And a 100 watt panel takes a little over five hours to charge this unit from using that type of panel or using the same type of uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, a charge adapter or cigarette lighter adapter from the front of your dash of your vehicle. Um, it does not come with that either. The only thing you get is an AC cord, which again, you can buy these things off of Amazon. It takes roughly about five hours to charge it at 12 volts using this. So, um, you know, you've got a couple different methods that you can use to be able to charge the unit. So this is a very small, lightweight unit. It only weighs about three pounds. And when we're looking at the capacity, again, this is, again, very small, very lightweight. It's uh, 556 watt hours, or roughly about 43 amp hours. So as we start looking at the types of outputs that we have here, we do have these USB A's, your traditional USB A's. These are your five volt, three amp for charging your phones and, and your, um, tablets and those types of things. You do have USB-C on here as well and uh, these will go uh, up to 100 watts uh, depending on the type of device that you're plugging in these smaller USB-C's. You do have this what I call a 12 volt carport or your cigarette lighter style adapter um, and this will do 120 watts max uh, roughly about 10 amps at, uh, at 12 volts when you're looking at this and you do have an AC output as you see here, only have a single AC output, and this is rated at 500 watts. So it'll you know run a number of devices that you have here. Looking at capacity-wise, you know if you're thinking about well, how can I use something like this? 
I'll give you an idea. If you were to use on the carport, we'll call this a carport for now. If you were using one of these 40 to 60 watt refrigerators, again, depending on the temperature and how often it runs, it's going to run 12 to 13 hours, one of these refrigerators, without any type of a charge input going inside of it. Um, if you're charging up your laptop, let's say your laptop power brick is about 40 watts, uh, you're going to get 10 to 12 charges of something like that. I've looked at a number of different types of TVs, like your 32-inch type TVs. Usually those run anywhere from about 40 to 60 watts. You can get about eight hours or so of TV watching. Now, you're not going to run all those devices at one time. That would just only be one single unit. And I'm also making the assumption you're going to be running that TV here. So uh, that's going to take a lot of extra power. Uh, so it's a nice, small, again, lightweight unit. It doesn't weigh hardly anything at all. Uh, and it's got a number of features. To turn it on, you hit the power here. And if you're going to run the DC, uh, you press this DC button here. That's going to run this device here and all your USB ports. I'll turn that off. And you can run the AC. You're going to hear the fan start up here real quick. And uh, that is going to run uh, the AC port that's located here. For something like a fan or something like that, you're going to get a continued out, continued reading of what, how much power you're using in wattage, roughly how many hours are left. So you're seeing here we've got 54 hours because we're not doing anything with it, and you're seeing your battery capacity. So a nice little small unit. Let's hook some devices up to it, and I'll show you how it works. I mentioned how these can be used. Again, these smaller units, again, perfect for running those devices in the back seat of your vehicle while you're driving down the road, the refrigerators, those types of things. Or once you get to the campground and you're looking for comfort, I need to run a fan, I need to run lights, especially if you've got LED lights. These things really excel when you're just using LED lights because sometimes a long string of lights only draws about 10 watts. So think about this, this is over 500 watt hours. You know, you could run lights on your campground, you know, for the whole weekend if you were looking for something like that. If you're a weekend traveler and wanting that supplemental light, you're boondocking and you're wanting to use something like that. Then I look at like my crew, uh, this summer they're getting ready to go in the travel ball circuit for baseball. Our Oldest grandson, Jake, is going to be playing travel ball, and they are going to be everywhere over the weekends. They're going to be playing predominantly in the southeast. It's going to be hot as blue blazes. <laughs> I mean, hot and humid. And uh, they look for some way to be able to cool off. So, you know, let's look at something like just these standard box fans. So this is your standard AC box fans. You see these are at all your big box stores. They're cheap. Um, you break them, nobody's heart's broken over these things. This thing's been used a bunch. Um, so for the you know folks who are at the campground, it's a little warm, you're wanting a little bit of a breeze on you, everything's stale, or again, talking about the travel ballers out there, this is absolutely a perfect application. So I'm going to turn the DC power off on this unit, and I'm going to turn the AC power on. We have a button for each of those. Again, the output is right here on the side. And... On the lowest setting, it's using about uh, 41 watts. It says it'll run for about nine hours. Uh, turning this thing on medium, um, it's now pulling about 44, 45, 46 watts, it's 48 watts, 49, 50. We'll see where it settles. It's pulling 51 watts. Uh, so this is going to run about seven hours. So again, if you're thinking about this from a, a ball game perspective, you know, in between, in between the um, innings, you know, you're going to be watching these things for about an hour and a half, two hours. Usually, you're going to get two or three games in. This would hold up for the whole period of time, and even charge up a few phones while everybody's uh, out there playing with the tablets, especially for the little ones that are killing the phones. And then it changes a lot when you put this on full blast. There we go. So this is at the highest setting. It's running uh, 60, 50, still about 58 watts, 59 watts, somewhere thereabouts. Uh, and you're going to get about six hours out of it. And that's moving a lot of air. Now this is your standard style box fan. There is a, a better way to be able to do this. And let me show you that one. 
You can also buy something like this. And if you, if you can't find these 12 volt fans in the locations that you're looking at, wherever you camp or whatever store you use, if you go out to ilovervlife.com and the accessories, uh, I'm constantly looking and replacing these fans as they go away. This is an endless breeze. Um, you can still find these sometimes are very, very popular. They sell out quick, but there's four or five different manufacturers of these. This one's a standard 12 volt, um, and it moves a lot of air. air. This has those uh, car adapters or cigarette lighter adapters. So I'm gonna take this, and I am going to turn the uh, AC off and put the DC only on. And uh, this, of course, again, I'm looking here at the reading. I'll show it to you. You know, now they're saying that we've got 99% capacity. No, no, we don't. No, we're not using anything yet. And I'm just going to plug this into the car adapter. And when you plug this into the car adapter, again, I've got several different settings on this. And this thing moves a ton of air. I'm going to turn it around in this direction. This is your air direction here. Um, and this is the lowest setting. Now, this is the difference here, and I'll show you this. I'm pulling 19 watts on the lowest setting. See the difference when I'm only using DC? Uh, and it says I've got 25 hours left. So if you're looking, say, camping for the weekend, and you're wanting to have a fan run on you at night uh, in the tent or the small little pop-up or you know, however you're camping, you're in a van and you want some air moving, you know, you can run this all weekend, you know, at night for about two or three different nights and never have to charge this unit up, run about 26 hours. So if you figure eight hours of sleep, three nights, you know, doing a Friday night, Saturday night, even a Sunday night, you know, and you're doing eight hours, that's 24. So I've got about 26 hours left. I can charge up some phones. I can do those types of things. It's just kind of, you know, you have to do some power management if you're looking at these. Now, this has multiple settings on it. It's got three different settings on it. So if I go up to two, I don't know if you can hear it. You know, it's making some noise now. Uh, this is now burning 29 watts and moving as much air, if not more, than what that box fan was using on its highest setting. Here's the difference. On 12 volts, I'm using 29 watts, if you can see that. And I've got 17 hours of capability left on it. Now, I'll put this on the highest setting. It's going to sound like a jet going off. I can't sleep with that, but wow, is it moving a ton of air. It's also burning a lot of power. 44 watts. Ugh! 44 watts and 11 hours of capability. I think in a realistic mode, if we're going to be sleeping, we're going to have a fan running on us at night. Let's say that Joan and I are boondocking somewhere and I don't want to use any of the power of the fifth wheel. You know, we could set this on the lowest setting, set it at the foot of the bed, have a nice breeze that's going to be blowing on us. Uh, and again, this is only showing 25 hours of capacity left, and it's burning less than 20 watts of power. So this is a great application if you're looking for something to be able to move some air or, or do those types of things. Now, the CPAP machine is a different issue, totally different issue. I'll get my CPAP tester here uh, that I've used in the past. I'm assuming 60 watts of power. Let's see what that looks like. So as I'm doing the juggling here, you know, again, using this 60, supposed 60 watt light bulb, um, it's saying that I'm using about 49, almost 50 watts. I'm gonna get about eight hours. So I don't know how much of a CPAP machine time you're gonna need. Is this gonna be the perfect thing to run that? I would say probably not because you may get eight hours, you may not. And you know, if you're gonna sleep a solid eight hours, you know, in between stops, then this might not be the best unit for you to be able to use for those CPAP machines. Again, looking at an eight hour capability. The good thing is whatever you're using for, if you completely run it down, going from destination to destination, overnight, 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 you can charge it back up again in just a few hours. You know, driving, I'm assuming you're gonna be driving for four or five hours. By the time you get to your location, you're gonna just about have this unit charged back up again. Again, if you got a 100 watt panel, uh, one of these portable foldable panels, I've got three or four of them laying around here. You can plug that unit inside here, charge it up four or five hours during the day. You know, you're gonna have to manage the sun. But again, these smaller units, perfect. You can see how light, not a whole lot to it. Uh, a great little unit for some basic 
basic travel needs. But if we need to step our game up, let's look at this 1000 unit. Let's look at this unit. This is the U1000. This is almost twice the capacity that we looked at in the smaller unit, uh, but we have a lot more features, a lot more inputs, a lot more capability. Now this one has two uh, AC jacks and totally combined this will run 1200 watts. So this would run a small coffee pot when you're looking at that. Um, it would run a something like one of these little teeny small 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 microwaves that you know, requires about 700 watts of power. So if you're looking at something like this, this is perfect application for your CPAP machine. We'll talk about that a little bit more as we go forward. Again, similar jacks that we have here. We have uh, three USB-A jacks you know, for charging your phone. These are uh, 18 watts, and then you have a USB-C. Uh, jack here with an output of 18 watts and if you have a higher power unit something like um, something like uh, you know one of your larger laptops that requires USB-C for powering this will run up to 100 watts one of the things that I like about this is you have two different inputs here for charging it you can use again a cigarette lighter adapter it does not come with those uh, you, again you can buy those 2.1 jacks to your carport adapter um, off of Amazon they're relatively cheap it does come with a power brick I'll show you that in just a minute and then you have your Anderson style plug here for your solar panels um, and you also have here a 12 volt accessory output. This 12 volt accessory output here uh, will handle 120 watts that you see with that is very typical with a number of these different units. So for charging this up you have a number of different methods. I'll show you the charging brick that it comes with that you plug in here. You can plug it into this AC outlet and um, it only takes about five hours to be able to charge this up from nothing if it's completely died. Now solar panels, uh, it can handle uh, solar panels in the 210 to 240 watt capacity, twice what you had before. Again, depending on weather, depending on sun, if you got good bright sun, it takes about five hours if you can get you know, really, really good consistent sun going into this unit. Not much different in charge time of plugging the cigarette lighter adapter in or your car accessory port as you're traveling from point A to point B. Roughly about five to five and a half hours to be able to charge it with something like that. So you're looking at a similar capability. Uh, again, looking at this from a output perspective, uh, it really has a lot more power to be able to charge things. Uh, again, if you're looking at something like these portable refrigerators, portable refrigerators run anywhere from 40 to 60 watts. They turn off, turn on, depending on how hot it is outside. But you're looking about 20, 21 hours of being able to run one of those refrigerators. That's very, very handy. Uh, if you're looking at charging your laptop, you can probably charge a 40-watt laptop about 20 times. That's a lot of power. Again, if you're watching a TV, something like a 32-inch TV, I mentioned that before, roughly about 60 watts, you're going to get about 15 hours of constant use out of a unit like this. 90 charges of your, your smartphones, your uh, tablets, those types of things, but where you're really looking at a lot of capabilities, again, for those of us who are in photography, video, or something like that, looking at your camera batteries, 100 and 150 charges of your camera batteries, you know, just so many different things that you can power with this. But again, let's use a similar test that we used before using fans and that 60 watt light bulb. Well, let's take this one through the similar test that we did with a smaller 500 unit. Again, this is a U1000. This one comes in at about 20 pounds. You know, still not too hard to carry around. I'm going to try to juggle this and show you the screen uh, as I plug in the various units. So let's start with that box fan. We'll do the same test that we did before. Now the nice thing is that this one does have two outlets, so we could run multiple devices on this if we chose to do so. I've already got this one on the AC. I'm going to turn this on the lowest setting. So on the lowest setting, I'm looking at, again, 42 watts of usage. And I'll try to hold this up to where you can see this. 17 hours of usage on this. So again, look at this small package as you're uh, thinking about where you can use this or how it can be used. 
again for those of us who are traveling on the weekend tents pop-ups small things like that you know we can run this a good bit without having to recharge it so we could run the a box fan remember now this is ac box fan we could run this for a period of time or again for those of you who are travel ball uh, followers out there and you got the kids out there doing that this hot summer um, this is a perfect application and i'll go ahead and skip the middle setting and we'll just go all the way to the highest setting so i'm gonna have to hold this and i'm gonna have to hold the fan because it's wanting to walk but it's showing about 13 hours of capability you could run this thing all day long I'll probably plug some other devices in here and keep it charged up. Only running 57 watts, 13 hours, so that's not bad. But remember now, what really works great are these uh, portable 12-volt fans, and that's where this thing is going to scream. All right, we're going to take this uh, Breeze 12-volt fan. We're going to plug it in here. And uh, again, these things are really efficient and move a ton of air. I'm going to take it off of AC. You have to hold these for like a second to do that. I'm going to put it on DC. I'm going to turn the AC off. Whoops, I hit the light. <laughs> I didn't mention that this has a function light here. If you're, you know, in the dark at night and not sure where to plug things in, you can turn the light on. Turn it back off. And I'm going to turn the AC port off. There we go. So I've got it on uh, DC only. Now what this is going to run is this accessory jack that you see here, the 12 volt accessory jack. It's also going to run all of your USB ports if you're choosing to operate those. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on the lowest setting. And again, this is what I would call our sleep mode. Not too loud, I'll be quiet. And it's moving, I'll flip this around where, you can, where I can feel the air coming out of it. A good bit of air. And this is, what do you see this? 19 watts of power, 19 watts of power and 44 hours of capacity remaining inside the unit. Making the assumption the calculation in this is correct. And then if I wanna move it up to one more setting, and it is really, this is the medium setting, it's really moving a lot of air. So again, if we're at the campground and everybody's cooking, it's one of those hot days that came in, a little noisy. Um, then this is now pulling 31 watts, 31 watts, you can see here. And it says it has 30 hours of capability left. So again, you can kind of, I'm going to turn this down again. You can kind of look at the math here. That's the big issue. Do the math. Uh, running something like this, if I wanted to use it all weekend, let's say a Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, we're going home Sunday. I'm going to be running it at night for you know eight or nine hours. Let's think, let's just say we're going to run it for nine hours at night. Ten hour. Let's do it ten hours at night. So that's ten hours at night, three nights, thirty hours of usage, and at that capability, I've got forty-four hours of capability built into this. So you can see the other types of devices that I could be running on this. I could be keeping the uh, refrigerator, little portable refrigerator that we have, I could be keeping that capped off, you know, run it for three or four hours, turn it off, run it for three or four hours, something like that. Uh, plenty of phone charging, tablet charging, any of those types of things. So as you're looking at this, you have to look at a calculation of how power being pulled. Let's say that I do have that string of lights and that string of lights is gonna be running 20 watts. So if I'm gonna be running that for five hours, that's 100 watts that I'm going to be burning totally out of the capability of this unit. And again, this unit is a slightly under a thousand watt hours. So you can look at that. That would be using, you know, one tenth of the capability of this unit to be able to run those lights for a period of time. You can kind of see how that all adds up. If I'm going to be charging my phone three times, and let's say that phone requires five watts to be able to charge it up, that's 15 watts total subtracted from that thousand watts. You can see how to be able to calculate. I'm gonna be using this over the weekend. How much power am I gonna be able to get out of it without charging it up? Let's say you're in a very shady area and you're not gonna be able to charge it up. This will give you an idea how one of these units work for you over a period of time. And then again, these, I really think the sweet spot for a lot of these are those 1,000, near 1,000 watt hour units. Those are your big weekenders, or if you're a van dweller, and you've got the ability to be able to hook a you know 200 watt 240 watt solar panel into this unit charge it back up during the day 
you're always going to keep that refrigerator running. You're going to have plenty of lights at night to be able to use it. Uh, and again, for those of you who are just weekenders and needing power or you're doing that overnight stop, this is a great unit for those overnight stops as you're going from point A to point B, especially if you have that CPAP machine. Let's see what that test looks like. I'm going to plug this in. Again, we're going to simulate the CPAP machine. Turn the bright light on. And this is a perfect application. This is burning, you know, roughly almost 50 watts. So I've got 15 hours left, 15 hours of capability running this as a CPAP. I can sleep eight, nine hours if I had one of those machines. Still have a lot of capacity to do a lot of other things. We could watch a little TV. We could keep our tablets, our phones charged up. We could run, uh, say, some low wattage LED lights. Again, you may not have the ability, you may not have a lot of power inside your camper. Your batteries might be for nothing more than, you know, your overhead lights. Uh, if you have a propane refrigerator, you've got to keep that sparking for something like that. Uh, you're not going to run a regular refrigerator very, very long on something like this. One of these commercial, this is a three-door or even your smaller two-door. You're not going to run it very, very long with something like this. But if you you know, looking at ways to be able to maintain your house battery and then have some of the supplemental devices that you're using inside the camper. These devices are perfect, perfect for that. Now let me just show you again what this one charges with. This unit, the 1000, comes with a power brick. It looks like this, large power brick um, that, you know, you plug into an AC source so you can do that before you leave home. Or if you know, you're getting ready to hit the road and you've got AC power in the campground, you want to charge this unit up, uh, you, know, you can charge it overnight. And then that way, it's ready for your CPAP machine. If you're going to pull over to Walmart or you're going to do some boondocking somewhere, you can use that. Again, you can run TV for a little while. You can do those types of things that's on it. Um, keep your phones charged up, etc., etc. And you can see the style of jack that this requires. Can you make that out? It's one of these little small barrel jacks. Uh, this is a 2.1 millimeter. So if you're looking at, you know, buying the adapter to run your solar panel, or you can use the Anderson style jacks. Again, you can buy these portable, you know, 100 watt, 200 watt solar panels, or if you have something affixed to the top of your van or on top of your camper that you want to power one of these devices out, you can either, you know, use an adapter for this barrel, or the nice thing about this one, you can use those standard Anderson style plugs, which are very easy to find, very easy to uh, adapt into a solar panel. If you got the standard solar panel style jacks, you can buy those Anderson to solar panel connections and keep this unit charged up. So again, I'm trying to find something for you that is a little bit more affordable in your RV travels. You may not have $2,000, you know, to buy one of these big, giant, heavy, you know, 40, 45 pound units that have 2,000 you know, watts of AC power, you don't need that. You just need something to be able to, you know, run that CPAP machine or run, you know, you don't need that. Keep your computers charged up. Keep your batteries for your cameras and those types of things charged up. Keep your phones, your tablets, watch a little TV, um, run a fan at night, you know, those types of things. This 1,000, almost 1,000 watt hour unit um, is a perfect application for that and, you know, not a bad price point. And you might have to buy you a couple of adapters for, you know, 15, 20 bucks a piece for the cigarette lighter adapter or adapting it to the type of solar panel that you have. So those adapters are cheap and there's hundreds of locations that you can find those types of devices that are out there. Okay, another product review. I hope you found this one helpful as you're looking for something that is more value centric as you're looking to have that supplemental power inside your a fifth wheel or your camper or your pop-up or your tent or your van or whatever you're traveling in just enjoy the road you don't have to spend you know five thousand dollars you know to be able to put in this very elaborate power system with all these solar panels and you know expensive lithium batteries and those types of things if you just need a little bit of power to get you from destination to destination or you know, in the case of this 1000, to be able to provide that power for those supplemental devices and keep it charged up with a single solar panel during the day. It's got its limitations, but it's also got a lot of benefits for you as well. Love doing these product reviews. Hope you found them helpful. If you haven't subscribed, hit that button. If you like these types of things, hit the thumbs up. That way I know to do more for you. 
and I love doing it just as much as I love RV life. See you in a campground soon. Mm -hmm.